Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and we're here. End of semester, this is our residential technology course, and so I thought I'd give a quick uh, review for everybody on uh, the course, and just a little bit of a heads up on things to think about uh, to uh, study. Uh, people always like to have that sort of little bit of clarification on things, so given it's an online course uh, this year, try to be as clear as I possibly can. Um, so in the, um, in the uh, course, we actually uh, use the textbook, right? The Understanding Construction Drawings textbook. And we kind of started around chapter five, uh, where we kind of got into the permit process and site layout and how the house is situated on the lot. And it kind of, the whole course really followed um, from the permit process right through to completion of the house. And so there were different sections and we did pretty good. We went pretty aggressively at it in the first half of the course. So we kind of did cover off the layout of the site, the excavation, uh, the footings and foundation walls, uh, everything below grade, the substructure, if you will. And then we got into the framing aspects and then that covered a few weeks uh, where we looked at the floor framing, the wall framing, the roof framing. We even did some rafter calculations and how that's um, laid out. Uh, so we got to, that took us to about um, chapter nine. And then in the second half of the course, we really looked at uh, things from that point forward. So we kind of got rid of the structural stuff in the first half. And the second half, we got into a lot of different topics, including uh, the exterior finishes, uh, the building envelope. We got into a bit of building science with the building envelope, and we talked about uh, air barriers and uh, vapor barriers, and what's the difference between an air barrier and a vapor barrier, and um, those elements. So we went through that uh, and that was in uh, chapter 12. We also went through in the building systems uh, in chapter 11. And there's, you know, there's a lot of activities that are involved with our building systems and they integrate with another a bunch of other areas. And so we talked about how the building systems, particularly the electrical system, the plumbing system, the drain weight vents and the supply system, and our HVAC systems, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. We particularly focused in on like a forced air system and we went through how that actually um, works in a house. We looked at some of the different um, layout views on that. And the chapter shows you some various um, layouts, uh, floor plans, shop drawings for the HVAC system uh, for the Doncaster house as an example. So we went through that. Uh, we went through uh, the um, insulation, the different insulating requirements as well with the building envelope, the different types of insulation, what's our value, uh, what are building code requirements. We looked at the drawings, we looked at the brook drawings that would articulate the different R values on them. Uh, we did a lot of quizzes every week. We had a quiz on some of this stuff. So um, that was reinforcing that material. And then we spent some time on chapter 13 uh, not so much, uh, we did spend some time on the interior finishes, uh, you know, kitchen design, kitchen layout, most expensive area in the house, uh, the triangle, how we lay out uh, between the sink, the stove and the fridge, a uh, bunch of uh, uh, discussions on that, uh, how the shop drawings for a set of kitchen cabinets would be done, what shop drawings are, we've kind of talked about that with the roof. Uh, framing uh, members for trusses and for um, truss joist systems uh, earlier in the course. And then we got into stairs and we talked about calculating rise and run, did a, a, a couple of uh, lectures on that one with the whiteboard showing how to calculate uh, rise, run, stairwell openings, getting a, a little bit reinforced how math is applied. We did that a little bit with the rafter layouts and then we did it again with the stair layouts and giving you a good understanding how the, the math, simple math fits in uh, in that perspective. We also talked about designing for a comfortable stairs, but also comparing and contrasting to building code requirements. We went through sort of as an example, the building code requirements in uh, stair construction and related areas just as, a, as a, a focal point, because that's an area of a lot of litigation that goes on because of falls. 
So that was pretty interesting area. And I think we had a lot of good discussions and we had some quizzes on that. And I think you guys were up to the task on the quizzes by the marks, um, which were pretty good in that area. So uh, I think especially when we did it the second time uh, and uh, we looked at uh, the um, from from there, we actually went on. So this was kind of the house. So that kind of completed the house that we were um, reviewing. And you actually did your major assignment and I had you do a little bit of a schedule just to get you thinking about how things go together. I, I didn't have too high expectations on the schedule. You're gonna do a whole planning and scheduling course later on and cost control courses. You have a lot of these different things fitting together as you know from your introduction to construction course as well. Uh, so uh, we did cover off though chapter 15 in the textbook which looked at multi-unit buildings, looked at party, role, party walls and fire separations between the units, looked at a bunch of details on that and then we looked at renovations and renovation drawings. So I think for the test you can pretty much expect that we are going to focus in mostly from chapter 10 through to chapter 13 and then chapter 15. Um, there will probably be about uh, 10 to 15 questions on, a, on the brook drawings, uh, maybe 15, I think probably more likely. Uh, there'll be some uh, stair calculations, whether I do exactly kind of like the quiz or maybe just give a few of them, I'm not sure yet, but definitely know how to do the rise run uh, calculate total run, uh, calculate a stairwell opening, all of those uh, particular parts for um, a stairs and using comfortable, the most comfortable based on our uh, seven and 10 um, requirements that we did in the example. So seven unit ideal rise, seven ideal run, 10, they should add up to 17. Uh, and then basically how to calculate when the rise is never going to work out to exactly seven. How to calculate the ideal run based on what you calculated for rise. That way I get everybody at the same answer. Um, but we do know that the building code allows some flexibility in there when you get really constrained for space and then you have to deal with the space. Uh, so you wouldn't necessarily go that way with um, constrained spaces. All right, and I think if we uh, prepare ourselves in that way and there's a lot of questions in the textbook, I've got loaded on, you know, for those of you that haven't noticed on Blackboard under the lectures, I've got all the answers to the quizzes that are in the textbook. You keep doing those questions, especially from 11 to uh, 15. You don't have to do 14. And usually my tests, they involve about 20% from the first part. So definitely there can be stuff from like five, six, seven, eight, nine on the test. Uh, there can be those elements, but if I'm going to spend most most of my studying time, I'm going to spend it on the back half, 10 to 15. So if you're if you've done pretty well in the first half, then probably your focus uh, can be on the second half. A lot of stuff intertwines. Like it's problematic if you don't know what a stud and a lintel and some of these other things are by now. And if that's the case, you need to go back and really sort of hone up on that. So you've got your work cut out over you for you for the next few days. But if you've been keeping up with everything and you only you know that really, uh, then you can determine how much time I need to focus in on that. But definitely if you haven't gone through the video lectures corresponding with this, these areas, that's where I'm going to be pulling out a lot of my questions from. And of course the textbook, right? Uh, so, um, if you're good with that and you're really acing all the questions in the textbook, then you're probably in a pretty good position. And that's where I'm hoping most of you are. So uh, it's been a great semester and I've really appreciated your efforts in class. And I must say um, your turnout was just excellent. I was really impressed with all the people that were turning out for the presentations when you had already done your presentation. So kudos for you. And uh, I've really enjoyed this group and I think this group's gonna go far uh, with things in the next few years. So um, I'm around. Anybody needs me in other semesters, uh, you know, you can always email me. I'm going to leave up the video lectures on uh, YouTube. So if you forget something or you want to go back to something, feel free. And of course, if you subscribe, you'll see that I've got a whole pile of other lectures up there too. So you could check them out uh, in case you're doing a similar course in your degree program. And it, if, if it's any help, feel free to um, review it. And also one final thing, if you can do me a favor, if you've watched this video this far, um, 
if you don't mind filling out the survey because that gives me some feedback on uh, where I can do things better online in the future. Okay, so Tom Stevenson wishing everybody all the best and good luck on the test. Um, just prep for it and you won't need any uh, luck. It'll be all on you. Okay, thanks a lot and bye for now.